Alex Seitzwald is a political staff writer for Salon.com. He's joining us today to talk about the increasing panic within the Mitt Romney camp. This, uh, of course, started with an article Alex wrote last week on, Sal on Salon.com. Alex, where do we really see the most notable type of panic from the right? Is it in the things Mitt Romney is doing? Is it in the right-wingers that are kind of abandoning Romney? What, what do you think is the most notable thing? Oh, yeah, it's really all of the above. I mean, the, the most notable thing is that we're 42 days away from the election here, and we're reading stories that seem like they should be written the day after Romney loses. Uh, there was a Politico story about a week ago with a bunch of unnamed internal campaign sources kind of throwing Stu Stevens, who's the chief strategist, under the bus. And that's the kind of thing you expect to read uh, from a campaign that already knows it's losing, and you have campaign consultants who are kind of looking for their next move, what's going to be their next job, and they want to uh, you know, preserve their own reputation and their own employability, so they're going to blame it on some other guy. And then uh, yesterday on the Sunday shows, we had people like David Brooks and Bill Kristol saying Romney has been going about this all wrong, Peggy Noonan, even Scott Walker, the governor of Wisconsin, you know, huge GOP icon, saying the Romney campaign is doing a bad job of handling Paul Ryan. Uh, so there's just all-out panic in all corners of the right, and I think people are really nervous, and I would be too, looking at the poll numbers. Yeah, it's funny because you're, you're right about some of the comments. They have the same kind of flavor and tone of the stuff you hear from. Who was the, I think it was, is it Steve Schmidt, the former McCain campaign advisor, who now a couple years after the fact goes on MSNBC and kind of shoots the breeze about the things they did wrong. It's the exact same type of tone we're hearing from some on the right in, in the heat of the campaign, which is pretty shocking. Uh, the other thing also that we're seeing is increasingly some Republican candidates that are running in, in Senate and uh, congressional elections are starting to put some distance between Mitt Romney's 47 percent comments and their campaigns, because understandably, it's a, it's a difficult comment to overcome if you're running where people actually vote, who are inevitably, inevitably part of that 47 percent that Romney is referencing. Do you think that this Romney gaffe fest could influence Senate and, and House elections? Yeah, absolutely. And I think it might even have a bigger effect down ballot than it will in the presidential, where you already have people who have mostly made up their minds and there's not going to be very much to sway it. But in uh, blue states, in, in bluish districts, I think this will be a big, big problem uh, for Republicans. Tommy Thompson, who's running for Senate in Wisconsin, very popular former governor, said that directly, publicly said that Romney's comments have hurt him, which you almost never see somebody in the same party uh, saying. I went to a, a press conference on Friday with Steve Israel, who's the Democratic uh, campaign chairman. He's responsible for electing Democrats. And he said Romney, with these comments, will hand Democrats the House. That's, you know, people say that's a little overstated. It's probably not very true. But the fact that you have Democrats this uh, confident about these statements hurting people down ballot, I think there's something to that. The one place where I think the increased confidence on the left might hurt President Obama is increased confidence might make people not think they need to vote. Is that a concern that's being talked about at all in, in Democratic circles? We don't want to get overconfident because then Democrats might stay home. Yeah, if you talk to people on the Obama campaign, they're far more cautious than a lot of um, you know, progressive activists or just your average liberal voter because they're exactly concerned about this. They're concerned about complacency and they're concerned that people just won't turn out. Uh, you know, a lot of the, the Democratic base are, are uh, groups that historically don't turn out in big numbers. And one of the things that Obama did really well in 2008 was partly responsible for his huge victory was getting young people to the polls. So if there's this perception that uh, you know, they don't need to vote, that's, that's a real concern uh, in Chicago today. What about these undecided voters? We've been hearing more discussion like Bill Maher saying, I, I don't remember exactly what he said, but something along the lines of if you're still undecided, you, you've got to be some kind of an idiot or something derogatory. And then we saw a Saturday Night Live skit that kind of parodied low information voters. How could you still be undecided? And I understand that. I mean, how could you really be so undecided at this point, given how much we know about these two candidates? At the same time, in the last 10 days, We've seen really big shifts in some of the swing state polls, meaning there, there really are, it, maybe it's not that they were undecided, but people are actually switching their votes. But who characterize these undecided voters right now? Yeah, it's, I mean, I, I think uh, the, the Bill Maher and the SNL characterization is actually true uh, to a large degree, at least of one segment of the undecided voters. And these are people who really don't know. And that's probably because they just haven't been paying attention uh, and they really are low information 
voters. But then you have a few other classes of people who uh, you know, show up on polls as decided or leaning, but they might switch. And those are really hard for campaigns to uh, zero in on. Those are you know, people a lot of times in uh, suburbs, in, uh, in districts that, that swing back and forth, like uh, states and districts that Obama won in 2008, but that John Kerry lost in 2004. So those are going to be really critical people, but they're really hard to identify, and they come in lots of different uh, shapes and flavors. So when we talk about the undecided voter or a undecided voter, it's often not one type of person. Uh, it's, it's lots of different people, and that's who these campaigns are really trying to reach out for. All this money is being spent for this little tiny segment of people. Speaking of, of spending money on a small segment of people, this kind of gets me back to Mitt's 47% video. And you put out another article on Salon.com saying you think the 47% video may actually help Mitt Romney uh, overall. Make that case. Yeah, so uh, this is a little uh, you know, far-fetched at first, it seems. But when you look at it, and this is different from down ballot, uh, when you're talking about the Romney campaign, they made a decision a, a couple weeks ago that they really are, you know, they're, they're a little bit ahead with independence, and so they're not going to worry about them, just like they're not going to worry about poor people, and they're <laughs> going to focus on, on turning out their base, because the base has never liked Romney. Through the entire uh, uh, Republican primary, you know, they, they switched around to everybody but Romney before they finally said, okay, I guess we'll, we'll vote for this guy. But if you go to conservative conferences, if you talk to really, you know, hardcore conservative activists, they are still not thrilled about Romney. So the Romney campaign from here on out is, is trying to really turn out their base and get their people to the polls. So a comment like that might actually help him among those kinds of people. If that's what the campaign is really focused on, and, and I'm, we're assuming that what they're telling the press is, is true here, you never know with the Romney campaign. Assuming that, it might actually help them. The problem is it hurts other people who are running in, who, who aren't concerned about their base and who are more concerned about appealing to independents like uh, you know, Tommy Thompson and these other candidates that we were just talking about. So while Romney might get some short-term personal gain for himself, he could be throwing his party under the bus and screwing them over. Yeah, it's the, the where I think it, what you say makes sense. At the same time, it's hard for me to imagine that this 47% uh, comment is really going to invigorate more people to vote for him from his base, who realistically on, on election day are not going to vote for Obama versus the number of people that are actually in the middle that might be c totally turned off. I guess it'll really come down to which states are the key people in that are offended or, or fired up by this. Yeah, I mean, I think probably the net effect is negative, uh, but there's, there's, in, there's something to be said. It's not entirely negative, and I think there is some positive benefit here. And, and the truth of the matter is there's just a psychological uh, bias here and that people assume that they're not part of the 47%. Romney must be talking about somebody else. So they're not going to be offended when they hear him say that. Uh, Obama voters are going to be offended, but if you're inclined to vote Romney or you're not sure, you're gonna just, you're the, it's a human nature to assume that you're not a moocher, so you're not gonna assume that's about you, even if it is, even if you're on Social Security or Medicare, uh, so you might stick with him. All right, we've been speaking with Alex Seitzwald, political staff writer at Salon.com. Check out his, late, uh, his uh, recent article about the 47% video and also about the right wing panicking about this upcoming election. Thanks, Alex. Talk to you again soon. Thanks so much.